Hello, everybody. Good to see you today. I'm happy to be here. Um, we are back on a Yu-Gi-Oh! Monday, even though it does say Wednesday up in the corner over there. Um, I'm having a pretty good day so far. Um, first day back at work this week, so you know, not my fave thing to ever happen. Um, <laughs> but it's pretty good. I only have three weeks left of school, which is awesome. Um, school because I work in a school. Um, but we're just going to get started with our Yu-Gi-Oh! adventure. So we still have a lot more duelists to uncover here in Battle City. Um, like this one right here. We're going to see who they are. Unknown, it says. Ah, Mako Tsunami. Um, or Mako in proper Japanese. You want to duel with me? Sure, I accept your challenge. I am Mako Tsunami, and I'll show you a real seafaring man's dick. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of uh, immature innuendo that can happen here. That's certainly true. So, one thing that I didn't do last stream, and one thing that we can definitely do now, um, is I didn't give you a ton of backstory on what, like, Battle City really even is. Okay, negate attack. That's great, because I don't have anything to negate an attack. Um, so the game really drops you into the action, really just kinds you kind of expects you to know everything. Um, do I have a quick play magic card? Wait, what does this do? I forget what this does. Imperial Order. Oh, we don't want to do that right now. Imperial Order, that's probably a move that we are not gonna... or a trap that we're not gonna use too much. Um, so great. He has his seven colored fish there. Um, oh boy. Oh boy. So things aren't looking good. I don't really have anything to play right now. Um, but Battle City, it was a section of the anime where Seto Kaiba um, is trying to draw out these super rare cards. So he throws this tournament in the city. Um, we're about to take a big hit here though. Um, we might not have a very good draw for this one. Uh, mm. Seven colored fish, that hurts. So, um, Seto Kaiba, he throws this tournament. And in this tournament, he's trying to, uh, every single time someone loses, they have to give up their rarest card. So that's like his scheme to like get these rare cards that are out and about. Um, hold on, I'll pause that for now. Um, let's see. Oh, JJ, of course. Yeah, the one of the reasons I do like this game is because um, it really is, it really kind of simulates how you would play a real game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it is really nice that, um, uh, not part of chain. Sorry, I have to focus a little bit here. Uh, I'll discard that, and I will discard our Dark Magician, actually, because we do have a Monster Reborn here, and that's going to be awesome. Um, okay, so let's see what we can do here. Wonderful. We're going to take that Dark Magician. That's kind of a strategy I'll use sometimes, is I will discard a card on purpose just to be able to get it from my graveyard, but that trap card is going to kill Dark Magician, so that's not great. That's not wonderful, but it can still do this. We do still have our good friend Celtic Guardian over here, so we can still attack his life points directly. Okay, but as I was saying, Kaiba throws his tournament, and in this tournament there's this dude, uh, Merrick who is um, trying to, I think, trying to get the same, like, rare cards that Kaiba's getting. Um, so then, you know, long story short, it's up to Yugi, Joey, Taya, Yugi and his friends to win the Battle City Tournament and stop Merrick's evil scheme. That's pretty much, like, the main gist of it. 
Um, and as the story here goes along, um, I'll kind of fill you in on some of the details um, as that comes up. But, oh, also, hey, JJ. <laughs> I didn't say hey. Gosh darn it with the Raigeki. This is ridiculous. Okay. Um, but not the biggest deal in the world. Imperial Order, ugh. I just don't have much life points to pay right now because I just keep getting killed. Give me a good draw right here. How about a seven colored fish? Let's see it. Okay, penguin soldier. That's not the worst thing that could happen. Um, babe. Do, do, do. Mm. I'll set penguin soldier in defense mode. Ah, flying fish. That's one of uh, Mako's worst cards. Still strong enough to destroy my penguin soldier. Um, it hasn't really happened yet, but one great thing about the penguin soldier is it can send monsters back to uh, your opponent's hand, of course, but that's really, really useful when they have tributed monsters. So, like, let's say he wants to summon a Dark Magician and he tributes two monsters. To send that card back to his hand is pretty punishing to him um, because he's already put a lot into it, really. Mystical Elf will get some nice damage off here. Love to see that. Get him to an even 6,000. I mean, I guess he was already at an even 6,600. Ah, oh, here's that pot of greed we got in our, uh, whatchamacallit last time, our booster pack. Royal Decree effects of all trap cards except this one are deactivated. Okay. Oh, wow, that's pretty strong. Let's play that. Um, I wish I would have had that from when we summoned our Dark Magician, but... Dark Magician girl here will get some increased attack points by having our Dark Magician in the graveyard. There we go. All right, we're starting to we're starting to look a lot better here, folks. Oops. Oh no, I accidentally didn't attack. <laughs> oh, that was a big fat misclick, gang. Oh no. Oh gosh, dang it. Oh, this is terrible. Oh. <laughs> I know. It has just enough to kill me. Oh, gosh. That's probably going to cost us the game. Probably going to cost us the game. Oh, my lord. That's horrible. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it really was an immediate boof. You are so right. Oh, my lord. Okay. Seven Tools of the Bandit. This is a card that can negate a trap card, but you have to pay 7,000. No, not 7,000. 1,000 life points. Um, I will play Dark Hole here. This is a great time to play it. It destroys all monsters on the field, but since I have no monsters, and he has one strong one, that's very good right now. Uh, I am going to take a hit this turn. We'll see. Okay, Tiger Axe, that's not the worst thing in the world. Um, mm, I can't take many more of those. Um, I really would love to draw... Oh, man. What does Ceasefire do? Flip off face-down monster cards on the field face up. Inflict 500 points of direct damage to your opponent's li life points for each effect monster card. That's not very good. <laughs> I think I'm going to lose here, guys. Dang it. If I didn't mess that up, with the Dark Magician girl. That was just... That was just dumb. Uh, guys. Guys. That's devastating. That is absolutely devastating. Well, I am keeping track of my win-loss record. I'm now 3-1. and one. So that's our first loss. A true misclick. As you can see behind Mako, he's got his... Legendary Fisherman behind him. That's kind of like his signature card. It's a really cool card. Um, <laughs> I appreciate that, JJ. Um, thanks for watching, anyway. Okay, we still, we still have a lot more people to challenge here. We're not dead yet. We're not dead yet. Um, so, really, I can describe Battle City a little bit. Ooh, my Valentine. 
She is pretty tough. Um, she is was kind of like an anime trope, kind of like that late '90s, early 2000s, like tough, hot girl. You know, um, Mai would probably have a bit more dimension if she was written today, but she was a pretty good character. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, JJ. Oh, what does Backup Soldier do? You can activate this card where there are five or more monster cards in your graveyard. Okay, so if we have a lot in our graveyard, we can just kind of take some weaker monsters out. So that's actually pretty nice. Um, all right, this is good. We're going to start with a nice defense position monster. All right, and we'll chill. Um, yeah, but mine can be pretty tough. Hopefully we can win this one. We'll need a better draw and a much better execution uh, than last time. Unfortunately, just enough to kill our beaver warrior. That's very sad. Karibo's always good to have. Um, we will use this Fisher uh, to get rid of good old Blue Winged Crown, even though she's probably going to have more uh, stronger monsters coming out like just now. Uh, not yet. Um, we could have played our Karibo there, but usually I'll wait until kind of like a more key part of the duel. Love to see Mystical Elf here. Um, all right. I'm probably going to use that giant true nade here in uh, not too long, uh, because what that does is it sends all, okay, it sends all magic and trap cards to the player's hands. Um, and I'm probably gonna wanna get some of those off the field, especially that one, which powers up her um, uh, faith bird. But I will use D-Spell. D-Spell is useful. It just destroys one magic card on your opponent's side of the field. I could choose one of these, and if it's a magic card, it'll be destroyed, but if it's a trap card, it won't. So that can be kind of like a good last resort, but I will destroy her field magic card. Oh, dang it, the magic jammer! The magic jammer strikes again! Oh, man. <laughs> dang it! Ugh. <laughs> uh. I get killed by the Magic Jammer, folks. Oh. Her blue winged crown goes to defense mode. That's very interesting. Buster Blader will be a pretty decent card to discard. Okay, we drew two Dark Magicians, so we can discard one, and I'll discard Buster Blader as well. Um, Dark Hole, that's great. I might just kind of hold out... Um, I'm, and really let her kind of, like, load her side of the field. Um, oh, Harpy's Feather Duster. Very, very, very powerful magic card. It is much like, um, Raigeki. I'm just gonna wait, because I want to see if she's gonna just really completely fill her monster side like this. And now... I'm gonna make a pro play here, let's see. I would have loved to have drawn a better card. <laughs> um, let's do this. Um, I will play the giant true nade, because I'm afraid of that, tra oh, I just, I'm afraid of that trap card. And now we'll play dark hole. So that really wipes her side of the field, which is awesome. Um, and I'll replay Spellbinding Circle. There we go. Um, so Harpy's Feather Duster. It's a lot like Raigeki, if you remember. Um, that is a card that just destroys all the monsters on your side of the field. Or on your opponent's side of the field. Which is very good. Harpy's Feather Duster does something similar, but just destroys all your magic and trap cards. So that is a card that we're going to want at some point in our playthrough here, which we should be able to get. Um, and like I said, a lot of the gameplay loop here, oh, this monstrous bird should actually get a boost from her rising air current, so that could work in our favor. Um, a lot of the gameplay play loop is just challenging a lot of the characters from the anime to duels, which is awesome. So here, this will kill our Karibo, so we're gonna play our Spellbinding Circle so that it cannot attack. Um, 
And yeah, so you're playing a lot of you're playing against a lot of the people from the anime. Um, and there is a bit of a story component that comes up. Um, we're not quite there yet, so I'm excited to show that to you guys. Okay, so Monstrous Bird here is looking great. I really, I'm just gonna hope that that trap card doesn't do anything crazy to us, let's hope. Okay, good. Um, because sometimes you can see Mirror Force there, which is really bad. Um, but there are a lot of times where it's just like, it's not worth it to be afraid of the trap card. Oh my gosh. The pro plays from my Valentine. Um, but you know what? That's okay. We've got a monster reborn here. I was about to say I was waiting for the magic jammer. So I could go ahead and grab our uh, monstrous bird because it got the, the rising air current boost. But I am going to grab Buster Blader because... It has uh, 2,600 attack, but as you can see, its attack is stronger now. It's at 3,100 because there must be a Dragon-type monster in her graveyard. Um, so that is awesome. Uh, I feel like Buster's going to help turn things around too, especially when we inflict 3,100 hard points of damage on her life points. That's right, baby. That's right. Love to see it. Wonderful. Okay. Silver Fang is not, like, super duper great. Royal Decree, that is the, yes, the trap card. Um, let's bring in Silver Fang. Now, Buster Blader will probably be overkill on this defense monster. Okay, Cyber Harper, that's fine. But that really just guarantees that we killed it, because I don't think Silver Fang would have defeated that defense position monster. Um, the... bop, bop, bop. Uh, I don't want to do that right now. And again, you know, we're going to lose our Silver Fang here, but that's okay, you know, because Buster Blader is going to really retaliate and get the kill on that uh, Winged Dragon. So here we can play Dark, uh, Giant Soldier of Stone. And Giant Soldier of Stone is great because it has that... Oh, yes, we have even more attack because that's a dragon as well. Um, Giant Soldier of Stone is great because it has that 2,000 defense, which is why you have it in your deck. But 1,300 attack is still, like, passable for, uh, for like, a three-star monster, especially. Boom! There we go. There we go. Much better draw that time. No, I really jacked up the power in my deck. Losing makes it all meaningless. <laughs> uh, some of these descriptions or just some of this dialogue. It's crazy. Um, all right. So we are now four and one. Um, I'm trying to figure out. JJ, if you're there, tell me which pack to pick. We have the Mystical Elf, Dark Magician, Black Luster Soldier, Great Moth. Ooh, we have uh, uh, the Gate Guardian pieces. We have a Cyber Harpy here. You know what? I'm going to go with the Cyber Harpy because we just beat my... Okay. Ooh, the Harpy is fun. Great. Okay, Ground Attacker Bugroth. That's not terrible um we might add that later but i feel pretty comfortable all right oh so many possibilities i'm so it's so exciting starting this game over again because all the people are just new oh let me show you something here um when you talk to a passenger i haven't showed this yet since you're participating in the Battle City Tournament, you probably know what it takes to win. Do you think you can give me some tips? Am I right in thinking that a deck should, should contain some powerful monsters? You know, I'll be you. You know, I'll be you can't lose if you pack a deck with creatures. Was that a typo? Was I not reading that right? 
Oh, we picked it at the same time. Oh, very cool. Um, so anyway, the reason you do that is to pass the time. Um, because you can get the new Duelist Weekly, or if you don't like any of the opponents that you uh, that are available to you. Ah, this is cool. Championship. Sometimes you have... Uh, I'll bet you can't lose. Oh, okay, very good, very good. Um, so sometimes you can do this, and you uh, do like a little best two out of three thing. So we're going to try this. Hello, participants, and welcome to the Duel Tournament. This is where you can find out if you've learned anything from your day-to-day -day dueling. This tournament is played in matches. Each winner is awarded a special commemorative pack of cards, so we better win. So give it your best. So, okay, we got Taya. That's not bad. Um, Taya's not the best, so I'm pretty happy to see her, <laughs> honestly. Um, a lot of times I don't do these because you have to beat a duelist twice to win. Um, but that's no big deal. I wanted to show it off for the people, so this is a fun little thing. Um, we're going to start with Beaver Warrior. Ooh, I like our draw to start with. Hold up, looks a little chilly. Throw on my jacket here. Um, uh, if I can do it. No, we're good. We got Spellbinding Circle there, but there's going to be better times to play that. Okay. Love to see Dark Magician. Oh, mm, this is going to be tasty. So we're going to take this here, Change of Heart. I'm going to grab you. Alrighty. Um, I'm not going to play Dark Magician. I'm just going to play Monstrous Bird to get rid of you. Because I could have played my Dark Magician that had 2,500 attack points, but on a direct attack, this is going to end up doing more damage by doing it between the two monsters here. So I guess a lot of uh, a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh is math <laughs> in many ways, but it's still still very fun. And now, hmm. Because change of heart, you only get access for a turn, but if you destroy the monster, it never goes back, baby. All right. Great time for Spellbinding Circle, because now this Dancing Fairy can't attack or change positions. And it's just going to let my good old uh, Monstrous Bird kill it. Ooh, we're going to play the Seven Color Fish. Awesome. I will uh, talk about this card a little bit, Multiply. Um, so if you have a Karibo on the field, um, you can place a Karibo token in defense position for each open monster zone. Um, so basically what that does is if you are really on like your last line of defense and you only have Karibo out there, you can do multiply and it will just like kind of set up like a barrier. It sets up like a little Karibo wall to defend you, which is cool. It's a cool little trick. Um, was there a rivalry at my elementary school with the Pokemon kids and the Yu-Gi-Oh kids? That's a very interesting question. Um, I don't really think so because, at least in my experience, it was like Pokemon came first and we were all into that and then came Yu-Gi-Oh and we were also all into that. Um, so they were kind of at different times. Um, because Yu-Gi-Oh! came out like 2002, kind of like middle elementary. Um, Pokemon was more kind of like early elementary. Um, but that's interesting. I'm sure there might be like a divide in like hardcore TCG fans um, between Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, let's see here. Because again, I don't really know anything. Oh, we could have, in theory, used this Karibo Multiply strategy. That's interesting. Um, alright, so we are gonna win this pretty easily. Oh, you feel like Yu-Gi-Oh! was considered less cool? Yeah, I don't know. Like, when we were all in, like, like, fourth grade, Yu-Gi-Oh! was like, everybody liked Yu-Gi-Oh! But then... Pretty quickly after that, it was kind of considered uncool. But, you know, we don't we don't play that here. Everybody's cool here. We just love 
nerdy games and video games. Okay. She's talking about exchanging her side deck. So that's why you have this thing called a side deck. Um, when you do these little tournaments, you can access your side deck and swap out some cards. You're allowed to keep 15 cards in there. As you can see, I'm not very prepared. I, I'm not very prepared. I only have Guy of the Fierce Knight in there. Um, so I could have put more cards in there if I wanted to swap some out. Um, <laughs> now it's all cool, bro. You're so right. Um, so yeah, I didn't make any changes because I was not prepared. But that was a very quick uh, victory on Taya there. We got a really good draw, honestly. Okay, giant rat's good. All right, we're, we're looking all right. We'll see if we can kill it. She does kind of have... I think it's the Forgiving Maiden that has 2,000 defense. Ah. Giant Soldier of Stone also does. All right. Okay, so hopefully our Giant Rat isn't immediately killed. Oh, it will be. Ah, uh, Marie. Marie. That's okay, though. Um, because one great thing about Giant Rat is that it is going to allow us to special summon a monster to the field. And if we can summon these giant soldiers of stone, that's really good. Um, because now, Marie's not going to be able to break through its defense, which is great. Um, also great is to see our wonderful, perfect change of heart trick again, which we're going to do. There we go. And we're going to play Monstrous Bird. Uh, you know what? I'm going to play Burfomet first. Because I don't know how many times we're going to get to utilize this strategy. There we go. Um, uh, no. Okay, that was, that was weird. Sorry. Um, I'm going to see if we can try to do our fusion monster. Um, which, uh, Burfomet and Gazelle, the king of mythical beasts, um, they fuse into a monster. It only has, like, 2,100 attack points, so honestly, it's probably not really worth having. <laughs> but, uh, it's kind of fun to use in the early game. And it's a nice little combo with Burfomet, because when you play it, um, I know that's fine. When you play it, it... You can summon, uh, you can bring Gazelle out of your deck. Uh, Premature Burial is kind of like Monster Reborn. Um, you just have to pay some life points to use it. Um, ah, Spirit of the Breeze. That is fine. Because we're going to lose our Giant Soldier of Stone there. But that's alright, because she played a monster with zero attack points in attack mode. Mm. I'm going to take this opportunity to just... Ooh, I will put Burfomet in defense mode because Marie can't hit through that. Um, and attacking a monster with zero attack points in attack mode, that is basically a direct attack. It does 1,400 points of damage. Love to see it. Okay. We do have Magic Jammer, so if she plays like a Raigeki or something, we're, we're fully equipped. Um, that's fine. Do -do -do -do. I also hate it when you get into the 50s, because so few cards have, like, uh... 50 at the end of their attack power. All right. So here we're going to get out our other giant soldier. Oh, no. Now Marie can just kill it. Ah, dang it. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. Ah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hello, Tech! Good to see you. Um, so I kind of slightly boofed that strategy. I forgot Marie could still attack us. Uh, do 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 
Not a ton we can do here. We're gonna go ahead and get Monstrous, Monstrous Bird out. Um, excuse me. Because Marie cannot hit through that. And we're just gonna go ahead and destroy it. That is a -okay. Minor boofs are okay. Thank you, JJ. I appreciate that. So you see all those messages come up. Um, there are a lot of things that happen to where you can activate a trap card. And it's just asking me a million times if I want to activate that trap card. So Palmerization. She has a very... Oop, no. She has a very powerful card in her deck called Saint Joan. Um, we're going to discard Celtic Guardian. And... That's probably what she's trying to fuse right now. So it's very nice that we had that magic jammer. Hmm. <laughs> Dispel, let's see. Um, oh, your brother's visiting. Oh, tell them hello. Oh, that's very awesome. Ah, yes, I hope you can make it to the next Emerald stream too. Um, we're probably going to do it Wednesday. So yeah, that'll, that'll be awesome. Let's see here. Let's bring out Gazelle. And I just realized the Burfomet died, so we aren't going to be able to use that uh, fusion strategy. Woo! <laughs> That's right, dude. Um, okay, so we can destroy the Ancient Elf. And because it's in defense mode, no life points are exchanged. That's the glory of defense mode. Oh, wow, another giant soldier. So we don't take any damage because it matches, but we don't kill it. Um, oh yes, uh, I was talking a lot about my voice last stream because I was very nervous about my audition. Um, it went really well. Um, it was on Sunday. My voice is definitely feeling better today. Um, and I actually do have another callback on Friday, which I'm very excited about. So that gives me a little bit of time. Yes, it was, it is a musical tech. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say what it is, so I'm not going to, but it was for a musical. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it went, it went well. It was good. Um, and like I said, I have another callback on Friday. Um, I really need to look at the songs, but, uh, it'll be good. The music for the, the callback I just had was much tougher. Um, much tougher than the songs that I will have this time, but I still need to make sure I'm practicing being a, being a good, prepared boy. Ah, uh, Morphing Jar. I never remember what its effect is, um, but it's very tough. Oh, you love musicals. Oh, that's wonderful. You did theater? When'd you do theater, Tech? Um... <laughs> Am I gonna sing for you guys? Ah, if I if I get the if I get the part, maybe I'll sing something. Um, ah uh, yes. Okay, so that's a lady assailing a flame. She has two of those. Ah, oh, I lost my magician of black chaos. That's okay. Um, yeah. When did you stop doing theater tech? I am about to take some heavy damage next turn. Oh, that's sad. You expect full choreography, that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Three years in high school! Oh, that's wonderful! Um, oh, oh, guys, this is gonna hurt. She's gonna do so much damage to us. Oh, and that doesn't help. Um, oh, boy. Okay, good. Okay, I thought she was gonna move all of her cards to attack mode. That's what I would've done. Um, do 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 Ugh. Silver Fang. That's not great. Karibo would be great so we could use that Multiply. Um, well, I guess I could have destroyed one of her Defense Mode monsters. Mm. Not good. Um, that's so cool that you're going to audition for your local theater. Do you know what the show's going to be? Alright, so we're still... Uh, we're not dead yet, folks. We're not dead yet. Oh, what's up, Blue Sonic? <laughs> can I sing the Yu-Gi-Oh! theme song? Um, I don't know if I can sing it, but I can do one of the great parts of the Yu-Gi-Oh! theme song. Because uh, it always just goes like, Your move! Yu-Gi-Oh! 
But there's one part where he goes, it's time to... Everybody knows that. But, like, right before that, there's this sick bass line that's like... I have to find it. Um, respect the proper spelling of theater. That is so true. I do as well. Um, and honestly, guys, we got a poopy doopy draw. So unless she has mercy on us and just doesn't attack, we're probably going to lose this turn. Um, oh, yeah, we're done. Guys, we're done. Taya's going to get us. She going to get us. Oh, no. Shoot! Okay, so we won the first one against Taya, so we were 5-1, and one, and now we're 5-2. and two. So that's pretty lame. But luckily, it's best 2 out of 3 here. So let's hope for this good draw this time. Let's see. Oh, awesome! Okay, you don't know the shows, but you want to audition with your friend. That's great. Awesome. That's so cool. That's really nice that you guys are auditioning together. That really, really helps. Um, okay. Seven Colored Fish is a great first draw. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it out, throw it out there. Oh, thanks for stopping, Tech. Thank you so much, honestly. Excited to get into some Emerald with you later. Um, Fusion Sage. Okay. We're feeling okay after that turn. Got a good Magic Jammer, love to see that. And as we go along, and as we can kind of get some more better cards in our deck, we can... Excuse me. Okay, great. Good to see. We can start making strides. Okay, love to see just some regular old defense position monsters. We haven't really been able to make much of a use of those cards yet. Like Imperial Order and I think Royal Decree is another one. Let's see. Okay. Beautiful Head Huntress. Get out of here. Yeah, when we pulled Seven Colored Fish, it's a really powerful four-star monster. Mmm. Mm. But I do have Magic Jammer. Ha! Get jammed! Have you ever get have you guys ever seen Parks and Rec? <laughs> I love Jeremy Jam and Parks and Rec. Um, and there we go. You will not be destroying my seven colored fish. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Parks, yes, JJ, thank you. Uh, ba -da -da -da. Okay, not a lot of great stuff going right now. Still just got seven colored fish. I could bring in my Dark Magician Girl. That might be a good idea at some point, but Right now, Seven Colored Fish is doing the trick. Jam is so gross and so funny. You are so right. Um, I really, really like him. He's like a character they introduce like later in the show, and he's great. Oh, I have my other Dark Magician. I have two. That's a lot. Um, can I fusion summon Dark Paladin? Um, I think you can. Ah! I don't know if Dark Paladin is in this game. Um, I'd have to I have to think about that. I don't remember if Dark Paladin's in this game. I have a Dark Paladin card, which is actually really cool. Um, in real life, IRL. Um, and for those who don't know, Dark Paladin is a fusion of the Dark Magician and the Buster Blader, which is really cool. Uh, which are like two iconic monsters. They're also like iconic monsters of Yugi, who's the main character in the show. Um, okay. Okay, we got Ceasefire. Guys, we're really just kind of in a holding pattern here. But uh, you know what? Uh, we'll wait. <laughs> Let's see. Don't be Morphing Jar. Great. Yeah, those like Cyber Jar or Morphing Jar, those are cars that when you flip them over, they just mess everything up. Um, and I always mix up which uh, effect does what. Ooh, Dark Magic Ritual. This could be very fun if we could finally get 
I'm just gonna set out Dark Magician Girl. Cause that's gonna upgrade our seven colored fish a little bit. Let's see. I would love to get the, the Magician of Black Chaos out there. I really like Ritual Monsters. Oh, it's a good thing I did. That's perfect. We needed that extra 200 points. Um, I really like Ritual cards. They're not like super duper convenient to use. They can be because you don't have to tribute monsters on the field. You can tribute monsters from your hand, which is pretty good. Um, but here I'm going to set down my Yami. And that will increase her power as a spellcaster. And let's see what she's got now. Okay. If it was a giant soldier of stone, that would have been like perfect plays by me two turns in a row. Hmm. Okay, we have we've got her on the ropes, guys. I just need to draw another freaking monster that can attack. Um I don't care. I'm playing Penguin Soldier. You are definitely not supposed to play this card face up in attack mode, but I'm doing it. Um, ooh, Relinquish was the only effect ritual monster at the time. That is so interesting. You're totally right. Um, that's really cool. I never really knew that. Yeah, a lot of times ritual monsters were just powerful monsters that didn't have any effects. But... Uh, the bad guy in the first arc of the anime, he used Relinquished, and that's a really cool card. Um, do I have a trap card here? What does Ceasefire do again? Yeah, it doesn't do anything for us. Alright, so she's gonna kill our Penguin Soldier, but that's okay. We'll get her back. We'll get her back. Give me one other monster that can attack. Thank you. There's Gazelle. I think after this, uh, after this here championship bout with Taya, I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, deck reconstruction because we're not drawing enough monster cards. Mm -hmm. At least monster cards that can attack. There we go. Great turn for us. Just needed that second monster. Oh boy. All right, I'm just, uh, no, I don't have one. Dang it. So here is St. Joan that I talked about. Um, let's see. What do you do, Imperial Order? You just negate magic cards. Oh, I guess I could have used that, huh? Oh well. So you're, you're going to destroy my gazelle, which is not the worst thing in the world to ever happen. Um, St. Joan is very powerful. Luckily, our Yami actually decreases her power a little bit. Um, hmm. We'll set down Backup Soldier. Unfortunately, we don't have much here. I'm going to put Dark Magician Girl in defense mode because she's about to get wrecked. It does suck that she got St. Joan out. That's that's probably Taya's most, most powerful monster. And I really misplayed my use of Imperial Order there. Oh, boy. Mm. Alrighty. Guys, Taya's working us, man. We are not getting the draws we need. Right now, Dark Hole would be incredible. Oh, mo oh Monster Re Reborn. That, that should work, actually. Do I have... No, I famously don't have that in there. But Buster Blader can at least match the attack of St. Joan with Yami out. And I can destroy the Ancient Elf. There we go. Now, something that I've done is that I've set a lot of trap cards out here. Um, that can be bad, because you need to give yourself a spot to play a magic card. Because if my side of the field was just fully stacked with 
uh, trap cards, I would not have been able to play that Monster Reborn. Um, so let's see what we can do here. I'll go ahead and set my Beaver Warrior. And I will just attack this face down monster. If I get in like a really bad way, or if it's kind of like strategically good for us, I might just sacrifice my Buster Blader just to get St. Joan off of the field. Um, and it'll of course destroy a beaver warrior. Let's see. Monstrous Bird. Alright, so we're still, still in a holding pattern. We're going to complete our turn. Oh, that's okay, right? I'm glad to get rid of St. Joan. That's good. Okay, awesome. Love that. Great. Um, uh, you see, when you have too many cards in your hand, it makes you discard one at the end of your turn. We just don't have anything to do right now. Um... So I'm going to discard Palmerization because we're probably not going to use that. Um, it would have been great to draw a monster there so we could attack her life points directly. Um, can I use my backup soldier yet? I can! Great! So what we can do, we can add a monster to our hand from the graveyard. Let's add Gazelle. And we can add our Beaver Warrior. Very good. That might not seem like the biggest deal, but having Gazelle, just like a card, we can play rocks, especially one that can kill this Fire Princess. Um, so we are going to play Fissure to get rid of that. Awesome. And then we're going to play Gazelle. And then, so we don't have to discard anything, I'm just going to set Giant Trunade face down. Um, awesome. Love to see it. Also, it's really nice just being able to talk through my turns with you all. It's very fun. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. Ah, yes. Um, she doesn't have anything to draw now. Let's see. Let's get... We'll just get Beaver Warrior out there. And we'll start attacking some life points directly. Let's see. Boom, baby. And then we'll do this. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, why not discard Dark Magician to power up Dark Magician Girl or Monster Reborn Dark Magician with 2700 attack? Ah. Uh, Yes, indeed. Um, that's definitely a good strategy. I think I've played my Monster Reborn already, unfortunately. Um, yes, you oh, you always really want to kind of like synergize your deck that way, but I don't know if I have that play available to me this, this round. Um, oh, guys. Change of Heart. Change of Heart is a ridiculously powerful card. Also, Morphing Jar. That is so terrible. I'm just gonna get rid of it. With my... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Here we go. Another misclick by me. But Gazelle will destroy her remaining life points. Ooh. That one was a real barn burner, gang. Alright, let's see. We are now 6-2. and two. Nice winning record. Can't seem to draw a card I want. Things were really uh, hairy there for a little bit, guys. But we won best two out of three. That's awesome. Ooh, Rocket Warrior. Um, I love that. This is a cool card. Um, it can only be applied during the battle phase of your own turn. So any monster, any damage this monster takes is reduced to zero. Any monster attacked by this card has its attack decreased by 500 points until the end of the turn. So, like, let's say you attack a defense position monster and it does damage on you, like it, it attacks the giant soldier of stone, you don't take any damage, which rocks. 
and let's say you attack um, a seven colored fish, 1800 attack. Since its attack will be decreased by 500, its attack will only be 1300, so Rocket Warrior can destroy it. Very cool little card. That'll definitely be added to our deck. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get into our trunk. Um, oh, and here's a cool feature I didn't show you guys. This is the filter. So once your trunk fills up with like tons of cards, you can uh, filter um, spe specific kinds of cards. So here, I'll just filter by name. We only have two effect monsters anyway. So we'll add that to our main deck, so that's lovely. Um, and here, I'm going to take out our polymeriz polymerization and burfomet for now. We'll just go ahead and put them, put them in the side deck, because um, I don't love having them. And then Chimera, there's a special like fusion deck that's off to the side. That's why you never draw this. You've never seen me draw that card. Oh, I guess I can't put it to a side deck. There we go, send it to the trunk. Great. So now we're down to 41 cards and we gained another good like four star monster. That's really nice to have actually. That is lovely. Love to see it. Um, so it looks like we have a few other challengers here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk to some passengers. Um, let's see. Hello. Let's say. Go through the text a little faster, please. I'm going to go through some passengers to get to the next uh, Duelist Weekly, which is nice. Hopefully, yes, here it is. And that's, uh, that's a reason that you can do that, is you can get to this. Let's see. You can get a Dunamis Dark Witch in these, which is really good. There aren't very many cards you can get from them, and as you can see, not many of them are very good. But there, there are a few good cards that you can get out of those. Um, so anyway, ah, looks like we have all green static. But um, we're kind of button up against our time, guys, so I'm uh, thrilled to keep sharing this with you. It was fun to do the best two out of three with Tay. I'm glad we were able to win. Um, uh, we were able to improve our deck a little bit, and that's just kind of how you do it, little by little. With each win, you can get another good new card and another good new card. But um, with that, I am thrilled to see you all next time. Um, I was thrilled to see you all today, and I will be thrilled to see you all in the future. Um... <laughs> I should title this episode Misclick. It definitely cost us a duel for sure. That was really annoying. But anyway, thanks folks. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you. And I will see you all next time. Peace out.